hello students uh, good morning we are uh, today we are going to study the topic uh, memory organization and the subject is computer organization and architecture okay so uh, previous in previous video uh, we already discussed about the von neumann architecture and in that uh, we have seen that how much important a memory unit plays uh, a role plays so memory unit a memory unit is the collection of storage units or devices together the memory unit stores the binary information in the form of bits generally memory or storage is classified into two categories volatile memory and non volatile memory so in von neumann architecture uh, uh, von neumann uh, provided the concept of or given the concept of stored program so that concept is fulfilled by this memory unit Uh, which is the uh, major component of the uh, our von Neumann architecture. Okay, so volatile memory is the memory when power is switched off, then it uh, uh, data is lost. And uh, on the other hand, non-volatile. Uh, in case of non-volatile memory, data is not uh, uh, lost when pa power is switched off. In next slide, this is the memory hierarchy, and as we can see that from uh, top to bottom. Uh, there is a register memory uh, this is the register memory this is the cache memory this is the main memory this is the magnetic disk magnetic tapes and lastly uh, here uh, uh, it comes secondary memory so uh, uh, as uh, we move from uh, bottom to top speed is in, uh, increases and cost is also increases and uh, uh, register memory is the fastest memory uh, 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 but the secondary memory is the uh, uh, having the less speed and we clearly see here that main memory is the uh, is located or occupies the central position here and that is the primary memory and these are magnetic disk and magnetic tapes so broadly we can uh, uh, known as auxiliary memory okay so this is the memory hierarchy structure um, and uh, in next slide this is the uh, we can say description for the that is structure memory hierarchy auxiliary memory access time is uh, generally 1000 times than that of the main memory uh, so we can see here that uh, there is a speed uh, issue with the uh, auxiliary memory but uh, main memory occupies the central position because it is equipped with communic uh, communicate directly with the cpu as well as with the auxiliary or secondary memory and cache memory cache memory is used to store the program data which is currently being executed in the cpu so uh, we need uh, need not to go uh, again and again to the uh, main memory we can say and the speed uh, is uh, uh, when we see the ratio uh, and it comes uh, 1 uh, to 7 raised to power 10 okay so this is the basically broader classification of memory location this is another diagram uh, we, here we can see all the communications uh, from the um, cpu uh, this is the cpu and how it is uh, communicating with main memory cache memory and uh, uh, main memory um, then there is the io processor uh, which handles the all the io activities of magnetic tapes or magnetic disk or, or secondary memory we can see our auxiliary memory with the main memory so this is the communication part uh, among the different uh, memory units which we can um, associate it with the central processing unit. Now the uh, memory access method. So memory access method means if there is a memory unit, then uh, memory unit, then definitely we need to read or write from that memory. So the uh, first one is the random access. We can clearly see sequential access and the direct access. In random access, main memory are uh, randomly um, we can uh, read or write the data in any in uh, any memory location uh, uh, within that memory uh, and it uh, requires the same amount of time so this is the random in sequential uh, one by one we can um, get the data or uh, reading writing operation we can perform and direct in this mode information is stored in tracks uh, with each track having a separate read write head so we can go uh, go to uh, go directly to that place and we can access the data we can see okay so three modes specifically for the 
uh, access method auxiliary memory uh, as uh, we are uh, in previous slide we have seen that magnetic disk tapes are commonly known as auxiliary memory and uh, it is not directly accessible to the cpu so we need a input output channels uh, for this and basically these are the main backup storage okay so this is all about the auxiliary memory now on in next slide uh, it is the cache memory and the basic uh, uh, concept uh, about the cache is the data or content of the memo main memory that are used again and again by the CPU are stored in the cache memory. So, uh, it uh, uh, obviously it needs a very sh uh, short period of time the, in, uh, when we compare with the main memory because uh, uh, the contents are readily available with the cache. If it's not uh, readily available in cache, then uh, we need to go to the main memory again. When the CPU needs to access memory, uh, it first check, uh, check the content in the cache memory. If the data is not found in cache, then CPU moves to the main memory. So, um, this is the concept of uh, cache memory, we can say. Now, the uh, uh, memory mapping concept. Memory mapping concept means um, the transformation of data from main memory to the cache. Means uh, when we map the uh, contents of main memory to the cache memory, cache memory uh, then this is known as mapping and it is uh, basically uh, of three types so uh, first one is uh, uh, associative mapping then direct mapping and set associative mapping so uh, these are three uh, mapping techniques how we can map the cache contents with the uh, main memory uh, so this is the associative memory the associative memory stores both address and data the address value of 15 bit is 5 digit octal and data uh, is of 12 bit word in 4 digit octal number so the, it needs argument uh, register and this is the block diagram uh, this is the block diagram we can say um, uh, for the associative memory uh, we need uh, uh, tag or uh, we can say uh, address data etc for the mapping purpose now uh, the uh, set associative memory in uh, in this cache is uh, divided into the different sets and we map the main memory contents with the um, uh, cache and this is the block diagram for the uh, set associative so clearly we can see that uh, uh, there, there is a tag field there is a data field and there is a address field in set associative memory now uh, uh, this is the virtual memory this is the uh, basically the memory which virtualizes the actual physical memory so virtual memory is the separation of logical uh, memory from the physical memory this separation provides large virtual memory for programmers when only uh, but actually there is a small physical memory available so um, um, user feels that uh, uh, he uh, he uh, can uh, he can store or work on the much larger programs uh, since there is a uh, enough storage uh, and that enough storage is provided by the virtualization of the physical memory virtual memory is used to give programmer the illusion that they have a very large memory even though the computer has a small main memory it makes the task of programming easier this is the main uh, concept for the virtualization because the programmer no longer need to worry about the uh, physical memory available so when there is a um, uh, less amount of physical memory we need to virtualize and lastly the, this is the secondary memory and secondary memory is the uh, very uh, large in size but uh, and very cheap in price but it uh, its access time is very uh, more uh, and when we uh, uh, do not need to for uh, when we do not need data for a longer time then we store we go for the secondary memory or our uh, computer system itself go for the secondary memory option and uh, so this is all about the memory organization 
uh, and the details of this memory organization we can discuss in the uh, next video so thank you if any if you are having any doubt